Today we have two absolute legends of the game flashing in a very fun end. I'm gonna look like an idiot if I'm wrong, I'm gonna look like a genius if I'm right. But I'm gonna show you this one actually for the strategic elements. There is a concept that this hand illustrates really well. Without further ado, let's get into it. Race four. Helmuth kicks the knight off in style with 9-7 off suit, re-raising Alesra. Dwan with a suited connector. There's the real re-raise up to 16 and change from Tom Dwan. 16,000. Locke and Alesra both out of the way and it's back over to Helmuth. What is it, 16-1? Cost me 11? I don't know. Uh, I'm decided, I'm and Phil makes the call. So this is season five of Poker After Dark. Tom Dwan still in his relatively early days clashing with Phil Helmuth, who three bets here after Ellie Lesra's open with a 9-7 offsuit. Now, this is what we call a polarized three betting range. So some people will three bet and four bet with a merged range, whereas others will use a polarized strategy. What merged means is they'll just take a lot of the good hands that they want to play. So imagine these are all the hands you can be dealt. They'll take most of this top chunk of hands that they want to play and play them aggressively. Now, it's more nuanced than that, but that's the general concept. Polarized, on the other hand, they're going to take these top hands and three bet or four bet with them. But this next tier, they're not going to three bet or four bet. They're actually going to go beneath that into hands that can't even call and use those as bluffs. The rationality for going polarized is that you get to play more hands because you three bet or four bet these hands and you get to call all of these hands that you could have otherwise three bet or four bet. And then this next chunk of hands that you couldn't previously play, you now get to play by three betting or four betting, taking an aggressive action and balancing them out with these really strong hands in your range. So I like this kind of play from Phil Helmuth. I mean, Elezra's opening wide, he's got king nine offsuit. Maybe Phil Helmuth has a read. He's, he's excellent at making reads. Nowadays, I would only do this with a really strong read um, because I would play a slightly more theoretically sound game. We didn't know what theoretically sound was pre-flop back then. Now, next up, we have Tom Dwan. And Tom Dwan has a very pretty hand, Jack-10 suited. But he's facing an open and a three bet. He doesn't really want to call a hand like this. But Jack-10 suited is a pretty good hand. And so Tom is taking the approach, presumably, of having a more merged four betting range here. And Jack-10 suited is kind of like here in that range. It's, it's pretty good. It's one of his better hands. He's not four betting here with Jack-5 suited. What we're going to see in this hand is how when you have a polarized range up against a merge range and you kind of both don't believe each other, well, the merge range wins. So Dwan makes it 16,100 and Helmuth actually calls. So this call is crazy theoretically. Usually um, you take polarized actions with three bets and four bets, but you don't then call four bets and five bets with those hands. However, like I said, Helmuth is excellent at reading people. Honey, honey, I was supposed to go broke on that hand, honey. Except I forgot one thing. I can dodge bullets, baby. <laughs> you don't think I knew he had a full house? It doesn't mean he's right 100% of the time, but I believe he sensed that Tom was four betting light here. And in this case, he's right. Uh, so he decides, you know what? If Tom doesn't have much of a hand, I look really strong if I three bet and then call this pretty big four bet and I'm gonna to get to take the pot away later. Good news is he's got position. Bad news is he's up against his nemesis, Tom Dwan. Tens for Durr, sevens for Phil. You checked? Yeah, he did check. Both players check the flop and Durr makes trips. The flop is queen 10 seven, one heart, two diamonds. Tom has a backdoor flush draw in middle pair. Helmuth has bottom pair. This is a bad flop hand versus hand for Helmuth because Helmuth's not gonna turn this hand into a bluff now most likely and Tom's probably gonna win at showdown. So Tom with middle pair decides to check, which is extremely reasonable. You could opt to see bet your full range here, but I don't think that's right. And Tom was actually, I would say, one of the pioneers of not see betting everything once you've put in a lot of preflop aggression. So Tom makes a prudent check and Helmuth checks behind, relatively standard, and the ten of spades rolls off on the turn, giving Tom trips. Both players check the flop and Durr makes trips. 
Houston, all week. Uh, I don't know. Probably. I might leave at the end of the week. Would you play with us? Then? Mm -hmm. I don't know. You can play all week over there. Oh, it's a lot. I don't know. You play online. Eric? Yeah, yeah. Me, me and Eric and Eli play every day. No, no. I'll, I'll stop How anything. much? And the game build anything on TV. 27-6. Dwan bets 27,600. And Helmuth quickly calls him. At this point, Tom bets 27,600, which is almost pot. And on this 10 turn, which actually Helmuth can have a fair bit of, like ace 10 suited, jack 10 suited, king 10 suited, um, especially when he checks back flop, because all of the 10x hands are going to check back flop. This is kind of a polarized bet from Tom. He's repping a polarized range. Because it's pretty tough to bet a hand like queen jack for this sizing on the turn and then bet river as well. Uh, it just gets too thin by the time you, you get paid off on the river. So Tom is saying he has trips or nothing. Maybe kings or aces, maybe. But Helmuth, looking at this bet from Tom, who has a, a really, really aggressive image and reputation, with his pair, he's, he's not looking to fold just yet. I don't fault Helmuth for this call. Seeing his hand, I would expect him to call against Tom. One thing that's really interesting is you need to know your opponent um, in Tom's shoes because some people just see bet the flop with all their air and they just don't have air to bet the turn with. Tom is not one of those people. He's deceptive enough that he can check total air. I mean, he could check hands like ace five suited. He could even check hands like king jack to then bluff later or even check raise flop. So I think you need to give Tom credit for bluffs here and I think Phil Hummies does. But be aware that there are some players against which you could just fold everything here on the turn because they had bet all their bluffs previously after taking that really aggressive pre-flop action. I know you like to be entertained, but I want to teach you something as well. Boom. Almost $90,000 in this pot. Both players have plenty left behind. Come on. Dwan moves all in. He's got Helmuth covered, so the bet's 119 and change. Total brick five hits the river. Tom now goes all in for about one and a half times pot, 120,000. And if he wasn't polarized enough on the turn, I think he certainly is now. Back then, over bets were a lot more uncommon than they are today. And so I think this screams of even more polarity than it would in today's games. So Tom shoves and Helmuth goes into the tank. And he is thinking to himself, wow, I got here with 9-7 offsuit. Uh, I'm either going to look like an idiot or a genius, I think is what he actually says. And I think he's trying to decide, you know, how often Tom has 10x, which would play this way a lot on the flop and the turn and the river. But how many 10x hands are cold four betting preflop? Maybe ace 10, maybe some king 10, as we can see some jack 10. Um, but if he puts Tom on a polarized four betting range that doesn't include hands like Jack-10 suited as much and has more like ace-4 suited and stuff that totally whiffs this board, like high card, low card, then he might be thinking that Tom doesn't connect with the 10 as often as he, he thinks he can represent. What an awful spot if you're Phil Helmuth, the five on the river, unlikely to have changed anything. What I want you to take away from this other than enjoying the hand between these two legends is building a strong image, a strong, aggressive, wild image like Tom Dwan has. Yes, sometimes he punts off a stack, but very often you see him bluffing in great spots and picking up the pot. Often, at times like this, you see him actually have the goods and get paid off in spots where most people wouldn't get paid off. I hope you enjoyed the hand. I hope you learned something. Until next time, take care and good luck. Good bet, kid, good bet. I'm gonna look like an idiot if I'm wrong. I'm gonna look like a genius if I'm right. Durr is absolutely stoic, giving nothing away. I'm sorry I'm taking so long, guys. Take up to four days. This time. I call. Oh. Three turns, yeah. Nice hand, buddy. Thank you. And just like that, Tom Dwan takes down an almost $330,000 pot.
Jack 10. I knew he started with nothing. Need a dog. Good hands. 